I'm really happy to have you and uh, I'm happy that you accepted my invitation and uh, I want just to introduce you like a, a visual artist and a musician. So thanks uh, Helen for uh, having accepted my invitation for Journal and uh, sharing with uh, uh, with me and my blog uh, your your art and uh, a piece of your experience during this uh, strange time and uh, new normality now. <laughs> Yes, well, I'm delighted. Thank you, Valeria. Um, so it's it's lovely to have an opportunity to kind of, I suppose, to talk about your work and to kind of talk about the times and how that ha might have an effect on your work. So thank you very much. Thank you, really. Uh, just I would like to uh, question. Uh, this is the first one. Could you talk about this new work and the series? So the new work that you shared is Other Words and the series Wilderness from 2018. Um, yes, well, I, I, I began, um, I suppose, in, in the same way as I begin anything. Um, I don't know I'm beginning something. <laughs> There's a huge element of not knowing where I'm going. Um, but I, I started in 2018. I I made a multi, a, a, I suppose a mixed media piece that was a, a response to the fires that had um, had been happening in California. And I, I, going to your reference to poetry, there, there's something about words that sometimes trigger things as well as images. Um, for example, the, the town of Paradise and the, yeah. the fact that Paradise was devastated and it was Paradise lost as far as I was concerned. That was that was the thing that rang true. But I was also fascinated by the visual image that I saw in a newspaper cutting and there were there were palm trees and they were totally blackened and they were to all intents and purposes, they were dead, but they still retained that uh, essence of themselves. They still looked like palm trees, albeit burnt palm trees. Mm -hmm. And I photocopied um, the image and I cut out, I photocopied it several times and I cut out these images of, of burnt palms and I used I used those uh, in a mixed media piece and it was it was largely a painted piece but it had these photocopied palms kind of punctuating it and mm. and I, I I suppose I am conscious of the fact uh, even though I don't do it deliberately but I am very aware of the fact that when I do something like that there is some kind of a connection to my I suppose my musical background yeah. um, because the composition and the form and the idea of a re recurring theme and that's what those palms sort of looked like but I was reminded in that in that piece um, of the wilderness uh, paintings of Peter Doig, uh, the Canadian artist whose work I had seen in Dublin uh, in the RHA and his work had actually moved me to tears and I had never been moved to tears um, by a painter before. I, I had always seen the possibility of music doing that but painting had never done that and he it that was that had a profound effect on me the fact that painting could be that powerful that you could actually be so I mean there's all of these things that <laughs> go on there's a sort of great mm. mix going on there but um so I knew immediately I had finished this piece this mixed media piece that it needed to be bigger it needed to grow it needed to expand and I suppose six pieces later um where I had made huge paintings and I had torn them up but you know I, I I'm very good at deconstructing <laughs> Um, and I, I actually uh, had a piece where I had a wilderness, uh, the, the, I suppose the colours were fiery colours, um, but I, I needed, it was quite, um, I suppose, it, it was quite uh, strong in a in a maybe harsh kind of way because it was it was for me it was burning and fire and you know us destroying our wilderness spaces and um, so in actual fact i softened it a little bit i uh, partly by sowing seeds i actually put mixed media seeds scattered because some in, in some some uh, trees some of the big trees in some of the forests and um, require heat 
extreme heat to yeah. actually germinate them. So there was that feeling of, well, this could be a new start if we make it be a new start. Uh, and then I also painted a uh, on the on the wall behind the painting, uh, a, a kind of tendrils and leaves and vines growing, and then I softened them down so that they could actually be the mist back in the mists of time how things were, but they could also hint at how things could be in the future. Um, so I suppose I knew at this stage that I had shifted from. Um, being interested in in the delicate and fragile balance that a person mm -hmm. has in in kind of maintaining their equilibrium. And that's what I had been working on up to then. And I realized that I had shifted now and that my concerns were the environment and how fragile the world is and how devastating we can be towards that world. Um, so then I moved my studio space and I moved into a smaller space. So I suppose that meant uh, initially anyway that there was the feeling that I might have to reduce my scale a little bit. Um, and then uh, lockdown happened. Uh, so the, mm. the, those two things I had got, I had settled into my new space and had got used to working in it and I liked it and I was kind of enjoying it quite well. I, so I think the timing of the lockdown for me as a painter was actually quite good because had it happened two months earlier or three months earlier, I would have been nowhere. I would have been in nowhere land like I would yeah. have had. My stuff would have been in one space. I wouldn't have had access to that space. So in certain respects, when at the beginning of lockdown, I just kept on working. I just it was almost like I had my, you know, I had I had I had stuff. Uh, I was, I suppose, I didn't quite know where I was going, but that's normal. <laughs> and I, I, and I actually, I, I just kept, kept working. And um, but one of the things that that uh, I, I did as that I suppose that changed in terms of my daily habits. Obviously, I was staying in. I was very conscious of the fact that I was in kind of close contact with a very elderly parent and um, I was very afraid of meeting people or having kind of any close contact with people oh, yes. uh, because I didn't want to be the person who would bring something yeah. to the elderly parent. And so a lot of my walking um, when I went for a walk took place in the evening time and at night time. Um, and I, I kind of watched, I suppose, uh, winter go into spring, go into summer, uh, just by observing the same trees that I kind of met, encountered yeah. <laughs> on my walks. And my walks were in an urban envir environment and my trees were not the wilderness trees. They weren't kind of, uh, they, they had, now there, there, there were two glorious um olive trees that one of which had the most remarkable twists in its branches and that has actually since been cut down and i i saw so the uh, so in a way it's almost like this is the devastation that yeah. nature has to endure so I, I i mean i haven't i have an image of what's left because i looked over a wall to mm. see <laughs> I had a little bit of peering and kind of leaning to do to see what was left of of this remarkable tree. I've actually got a painting that's painted and um, that that came out of the twists and turns oh, of that particular yeah. tree. Um, but I do know that I have the image now of what the mark is left like on the trunk um, and that is going to go into a painting somewhere. We were looking at the kind of the the shapes of the branches and the twists and the turns and 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 some of the trees were allowed to kind of follow their natural path and there definitely was a feeling of kind of this is how a tree would go if it was allowed to kind of you know kind of grow without inhibition um and then it was the kind of the faint little tinges of green and the buds and then then the blossoms and at, at somewhere in the, this I had got an invitation from a friend to do a meditation um, a series of meditations um, and it was on abundance and on the night the I suppose on the first the night of the first day that I had um, the the what to call it the, the, the first day that I had done this meditation, mm -hmm. I was walking on this night and the blossoms on 
one particular tree had suddenly kind of burst into and they were like pom poms at the end of the okay. tree and it, 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 it they looked so abundant like this this it seemed to be that there was this everything and, and sometimes when you're working and you're painting because you are focused on a particular idea or a particular thought sometimes you can actually see yes everything does come together the things that happen in your small mm. little world kind of come together and inform in some way so I had these pom-poms and that went into a poem somewhere and um, so um but I, I'm not sure it, it actually I think it might have been edited out of it or I can't find it anyway I haven't found it since but I know I, I talked about pom-poms and the the feeling of dancing and abundance and all of yeah. that in the word abundance I look at the word dance at the end of it and you know it all seems to kind of fit together anyway I am digressing now one of the other things about the the walks at night was that there was an illumination from the street lighting that was not natural and but that added another dimension to yeah these growing things and it, it did mean that when I went back into the studio I had very strong uh, memories of the vision of how the branches looked like when they were set against something lighter behind as opposed to when they were the focus of the light on, on them so you were talking about you had the yeah, I suppose the the contrast between background and foreground, but it wasn't always the same. It sometimes was the opposite thing, and I I know that even when I wasn't painting branches, like I was mm. uh, I was painting coral actually at one point in time, um, and uh, that um, those contrasts were informing the paintings that I was working on. Now, having said that, the paintings did start to have a feeling of they were certainly reduced and uh, there was also a period of time when the moon was was supposed to be a, a pink moon and yeah. uh, and I was out watching for the moon as well and uh, I happened to have two uh, circular canvases in my possession yeah. that I have somewhere and, it's uh, unusual to see usually we can see always uh, paintings uh, square yes, and uh, yeah. or rectangular so it was unexpected to see something circular yes. because uh, yeah. it is a form that uh, is uncommon and uh, now so many artists they are using the the circular uh, yes. yeah. shape so let me and know it was, now <laughs> it was just by it's just by chance that i had picked up these two i had seen them somewhere and i kind of thought oh i think i might this is before lockdown obviously i had them in my possession and uh, i am a hoarder you see i do gather <laughs> things <laughs> always knowing there will be a time when they came and and it, it 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 did seem to be that they represented the world which was now a smaller world so there was oh. there was that kind of feel but they also then that shape went into into Very some of the tree right. painting because it was the moon, it was the world, it was a whole lot of other things. It just crept in as a sort of a, 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 a I suppose, like a, like an idea. Um, like sometimes I have a, a leaf pattern. It's almost like a pattern. So I, I think there's quite a lot of pattern. I think I, I I fall back to pattern kind of quite regularly. I mean, I like I collect fabric and textiles, and uh, I mean anyone who knows my house knows that there's a lot of stuff in. Um, and but but I, I think I just am drawn to patterns and colors, but pattern against pattern and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I, I think I think the, 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 the rounded shape then became that sort of a thing that, um, that that just entered into it. But it was representing world and the smallness and these and the scale of these definitely scale was smaller than, mm. than I had been doing previously to that it was almost like I was now focusing on the micro as opposed to the the macro of, of yeah. the but I have since there's there's a sort of a shift um I suppose I shift I what I did find was myself shifting zooming in and zooming out a little mm. bit uh, and when I was writing something for you um I did talk about the fact that one of the things that I did during lockdown was I started sowing seeds. Now I would kind of probably do that anyway, but because I had more time because I yeah. was locked, I actually managed to water them. <laughs> I managed to nurture know, them yeah. and find them and kind of move pot them on and, and move them to something else. So I have I now have tomatoes that I'm eating that kind of, you know, they are now ripe and stuff like that. But um, the 
when I was talking to you or writing for you um, there last week or the week before, um, I, I was aware of the fact at some stage I kind of said I was doing the real things I was I was actually sowing mm. the seeds and watching them from seedling up and then I started I, I kind of thought I need to do that in a painting so I actually have started a bigger yeah. a bigger piece where I literally started off by just putting in saplings just little kind of things so I'm now making a wilderness of my own in painting so that's that's where that's as far as I've gone with it um, but I it it, it actually the whole, I suppose, the whole process is very much an intuitive process, and it it does. I I think that the main thing is for me, I tend to be quite open to whatever mad notion hits me, and I kind of yeah. think, okay, I'll follow that, um, and see where it takes me, and uh, then sometimes I will revisit pieces, uh, in the light of where I am now, because a piece is painted over and particularly the kind of pieces that I work on they tend to be painted over a long period of time mm. so it's, in fact I'm very good at revisiting as well and uh, again sometimes uh, a pretty okay piece gets totally changed sometimes not into an okay piece but you know that's just I I mean that's how I work and that's how life is as well isn't it yeah so. I think uh, that uh, your just musician background uh, is uh, I don't know if is helping you to improvise because uh, improvise and be open uh, to accept all this uh, uh, all this life because uh, we can um, is unpredictable especially yeah. now this time is really yeah. unpredictable so for you probably you have you are able to handle this situation because anyway you are able to work with words and create mm. just poems and so improvise with words improvise with music so and at the same time improvise then with colors and then create something on your canvas so Probably this is something that you can recognize in you and uh, just admit that uh, all these your skills they are helping you to um, just to perform and uh, react in a certain correctly in a certain way if I can say uh, to this life so so strange and un unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, certainly that's that's absolutely uh, true, I suppose. And because I don't think of it very, very often, I don't sort of analyze it very often. I actually always think it's very good to write about your work or to have to sort of sometimes submit something to some place like that. And quite often you get you, it doesn't seem like you get anywhere with it. But yeah. actually the act of sitting down and I suppose thinking enough to write about it actually allows you to recognize something. I mean, certainly the the whole idea of kind of form, because even I, I, I did some back in, I suppose the 2000s, I think it was, I did some improvisation work with musicians and yeah. it, was, it was responding to paintings. Um, and uh, I I was kind of very aware of that because I was sort of leading these, um, these sessions, um, but you still had to have some sort of a structure and you had mm. to help people to have a story. So even though you had this lovely creative thing going on and uh, improvise, like nobody yeah. knew what they were going to do, there were still structures. And I suppose in my painting, I think I'm very conscious of, of uh, I suppose I'm, I paint everything in a painting, everything can, it, the, the possibility of everything can go into a yeah. painting. But in the end, when you're kind of, I suppose, deciding this is it, I've I've done, it does have a structure. And I think that's of course. The, that's the legacy of, of music, because um, there is always a formal composition somewhere to be found. No, I, I know. Yeah. yeah. So other just another question. So I don't know if uh, uh, you already answered to my question, but uh, Probably you already mentioned your interest for uh, for the nature during your walk uh, during the night uh, and how nature is uh, uh, reflourishing during this lockdown because uh, uh, it's possible to see I think everywhere in the world the effect of uh, the humankind on 
on on the nature. So the Anthropocene uh, uh, is our. You see, we are living in the Anthropocene, and unfortunately, uh, the Anthropocene is causing all this disaster. And I would like to know your uh, your position, but also how you are reacting in your art to to these problems uh, and your position and your point of view. It's kind of it's that whole idea that there is there are things that humankind. Um, have to do, have to do or have to start thinking along the lines of um the other thing is that i mean the covid uh, itself um it, it is believed to really to have come about as a result of our incursions on the animal world yeah. that that in, in you know and so therefore there's an absolute direct link between this disease and that that is kind of um causing us to be mm. in lockdown, causing this new normal and a totally different kind yeah. of a world, that, that there is a direct link between that and humankind's um, invasion of the habitats yeah. and the spaces and of, of, of nature. So um, it's all one big kind of um, and as, as an individual person, it doesn't feel like there's much I can do. So yeah. as an artist, I kind of feel all I can do is actually paint paintings that 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 maybe draw attention and maybe write stuff and that eventually but like my paintings are not meant to be paintings of devastation I, I'm hoping no. that there is something yeah. there, that there is I'm still I still am I suppose in favor of beauty and um and so even even in the painting where I kind of was painting fire and kind of stuff like that I did I did tame it down and try and sow seeds and try because we we are nothing if we haven't got some hope to kind of end um, it so that's as a, as yeah. a painter the moment at the moment that's where I am at um, in in trying to sort of use painting and use my creative practice to try and sort of um, draw attention to the wilderness yeah. draw attention to nature um, and uh, maybe that's that's it's only a very small thing it can't it's not going to change the world how you are living now this uh, this second the third uh, I don't know now mm. <laughs> that the number of this other new phase. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's it's kind of strange because I I don't feel I have emerged from the lockdown as such. Um, I I mean I I'm very wary at the moment. Um, I I I I suppose I can't envisage how it's going to be in a year's time because there's such an, an element of the unknown about it. Mm. Um, and so I suppose I'm down to the day to day. Uh, I kind of am sort of um, trying to keep myself, uh, I suppose, what's the word, motivated and uh, I suppose allowing for the fact that it's quite difficult. Um, I, and I did say I have an elderly parent. And so, I mean, the, I still to an extent have the same kind of issues as I yeah. as I had before. I, I don't feel that I'm free to kind of go out to all places. I certainly am going into any kind of indoor um, spaces with complete with my mask um, yeah. and I'm you know I'm I'm not taking any chances I can't I, I, I feel I can't afford to take any chances um, and uh, I think a lot of people I I, I, I I suppose the fear for me is that looking at, at people a lot of people seem to have forgotten very quickly yeah that we have um, that we have been locked down and they seem to have forgotten that that this disease is still rampant in places and um, and that is very much a threat to us. Um, so I suppose it, it concerns me in terms of nature and the natural environment, because I know that during the lockdown, loads of people kind of really for the first time kind of looked at their garden and planted plants and did did you know li literally had these little small pockets of nature um and nurtured nature yeah. in their own little environments and there there is the fear that our memory sometimes can be very short and um but as as in the life of an artist being isolated is part of what your your yeah. art you know it, it, yeah. it's a re it's it, and and i suppose what i have to be careful of is that um 
it's relatively easy for me to spend time in isolation and there are people for whom it is a real a real difficulty like yeah. there are people that 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 is just not their not their strength at all so i suppose and, and we can get very blasé about about it as artists because we're actually used to being on our own you know we're used to working on our own we're used to motivating ourselves or not <laughs> as yeah, the case no, may be. i know you know I think so that, yeah artists that they are uh, i think the best they just uh, they are they are doing their best also in this situation and uh, anyway because uh, uh, it's uh, anyway like a comfort zone, uh, stay mm. alone, yeah. uh, yes. and it's good for this time uh, for the virus. Uh, but it's also good because anyway you have time uh, to to think, uh, and yeah. there is not anymore that uh, um, anxiety to create something. Because sometimes I can see the art world is uh, there is a lot of pressure from uh, oh do an exhibition do this and do that and now this is low down i think yes. it's also yeah. good in general for the art world yeah. because they the it, artists they can have the right time to think again mm -hmm. to produce a good uh, a good piece and not anymore a piece for an exhibition and piece yes. for something yeah. so there is not anymore that pressure from uh, yeah. from the market yeah that is an issue um but i suppose i'm of an age where i've actually decided it's not it is i have to get by and trying to get by is is the hard thing but in actual fact um I suppose I don't have ambitions in that sense. Um, yeah, no. I have. I, I, for me, my biggest ambition is is that I suppose that I can still have something to create. That's um, that I have stuff to yeah. uh, to work on, to interest me, to kind of, kind of keep working. And I, and there's there doesn't seem to be any shortage of that at the moment in my head. Thanks, Emilia, for uh, for your time and. Uh, for all everything that you share with uh, with me and uh, with uh, with this blog so thanks a million again thank, thank you valeria it was a pleasure <laughs> <laughs>